Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sasha and um, I'm going to be talking about something that's, I don't know, kind of, I've been seeing something on social media often. We, we've all seen it numerous times. We've more than likely heard it, probably been told it yourselves, but um, I am going to be talking about why not all babies are blessings. <laughs> and I know it sounds almost like a clickbait title, but it's really not. And there's a reason why I'm talking about this because I feel like whenever I hear that being told to a young woman, it is usually a woman who is single and unwed. She's not married and she is, you know, I just found out that she's pregnant. And in some cases, the father of the child does not want to be involved, does not, you know, care for her, like her. In some cases, they've completely left and, and cut her off. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to um, give the definition of blessing. And I am looking at the Oxford Dictionary. And so there are a few. So I'm going to read them all. The first definition is God's favor and protection. Um, a prayer asking for God's favor and protection. Grace said before or after a meal. A beneficial thing for which one is grateful. Something that brings well-being. Um, and a person sanction or support. So the reason I wanted to give that definition is you know just to kind of get some background and i know some say oh well, you know it says it, it talks about god and or god and a lot of times whenever someone is telling a young woman who just found that she's pregnant oh this baby is a blessing they will usually follow it up with some bible verse or saying god has you know wanted this to happen and i am gonna call bs on that i'm gonna say no no he did not um or god did not and the only reason I say that is because, you know, when when these young women are, you know, finding out that they're pregnant and they are not married and the father either is kind of in and out, you know, he's up and down, he doesn't know what he wants, you know, what he wants to do, if he even wants to be with her. It is not, a, I'm going to say a smart thing to tell this young lady, oh yes, this baby is a blessing. A lot of these women are living in poverty. They're, they're struggling. They are not stable themselves financially, mentally, emotionally. Um, some of them may be unemployed, may work at some menial part-time part -time or minimum wage job. There's a lot of factors. So telling her, oh my God, this baby is a blessing. It's, it, it's, it's trying to force this woman to make a decision that she may not be okay with that she may not be ready for. And, you know, people always try to bring in these other factors of, oh, well, there are women out there who can't have babies. That is not the story here. We're not talking about a woman who wants to have a baby and she is going through fertility issues. We are talking about the mass majority of women who get pregnant, they are not married, the father is does not want to be involved. We're not talking about the woman who's, the, the father wants to be involved or the married one. We're talking about those who do not. Um, and there's a, a lot behind that, you know? And then the one thing that I do want to focus on is because there is a lot of intimate partner violence when a woman gets pregnant and the father expresses he does not want the baby. He doesn't want to be with her. And if she keeps the baby, he will leave. And we've all seen the stories in the news it's nothing new. This has been going on for decades where women have been getting harmed, even unalived, because they chose to continue on with a pregnancy when the man has expressed otherwise. Now, yes, before you guys come in the comments, well, it's her body, her choice. Yes, it is. It is. I'm a woman. I myself do not have children. And yes, it is her body, her choice. But when your friend or family member comes to you and they say that they're pregnant and that the father has been acting like a, a, a cuckoo clock and nobody is telling her the real honest truth of, you know what, I understand, 
here's your options. Nobody gives options. Everybody just says, oh, that baby is a blessing. That baby's a blessing. And you're putting it in this young woman's head that if she keeps this baby, it's going to just bless her in so many ways. And then a lot of times, you know, um, you guys will offer this, this fake support. Oh, we're going to support you, girl. We're going to support you. We got you. We got you. And then y'all won't. Many of y'all will come to the baby shower just to see who the baby daddy is and, and what gifts, you know, she's going to get. But then when she has the baby, y'all are nowhere to be found. She'll call you for a ride. She'll call you to, hey, can you watch the baby? And none of you will be there. And a lot of you know this. A lot of you have told your friend or that family member, girl, this baby is a blessing. And when she called you for some help or whatever, you was like, girl, you know, I can't do that. I'm about to go out. I got to work. Girl, no. Um, and so I feel like a lot of you, when you're telling these girls this, it's in some cases, you want them to stay in the same situation. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of times when a woman finds out that she's pregnant and she is not financially stable, mentally, emotionally stable across the board, she's not, she just, she's all over the place. A lot of times, none, none of you will tell her the honest truth. None of you will sit her down and say, look, uh, I'm sure this came as a surprise. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are, but you should really dig deep into what you want. Okay. You know, don't worry about whether it's a boy or a girl and all the cute clothes and the cute baby bump. Worry about your reality. What does your finances look like? What's your life look like? Are you living, are you able to take care of yourself and pay your bills? Uh, are you living with people? Are you bouncing from couch to couch? Are you living with your mom and all siblings? You know, are you living in a house with a lot of people? Or are you living okay? Are, are you making it through your day to day? And nobody says this. Everybody just sits there and tells this girl, this is it's a blessing. Keep the baby. Keep the baby. You know, and then some cases, some of y'all will say, well, you don't need him. You don't need him. And it's like, whether or not you, you need this, the father, be smart. But so many of y'all be worried about the stupidest things. You be worried about if you're having a boy or a girl. You be worried about the cute clothes I'm going to put my baby in. And this, that, and the other. And you're forgetting that the reality is after the, the cute clothes are bought, once you go to the hospital and you give birth and you come back home, you now have a living, breathing human that you have to take care of. No matter what cute outfits you put him or her in. You've got to feed this baby, take care of this baby, take the baby to the doctor, all of the above. And telling someone that this baby is a blessing, it does not help when we are seeing time and time again, women being unalived by their partners for continuing on with a pregnancy. And this is across the board of all ethnicities. This is not just a black thing or a white thing. This is all across the board. We're also seeing, unfortunately, women unaliving their children because the father did not want to be with her okay i am going to more focus on the women who experience domestic violence at the hands of their partner while pregnant so uh give me a second i gotta pull up the i wrote some stats and i will post the links in the video so you can check them out um read them read them more so the american college of Obst i'm sorry i gotta say that again the american college of obstetricians and gynecologists states that one in six abused women they are first abused during pregnancy so what's that say it's not saying that this man was just sitting around waiting for you to get pregnant and then hauled off and hurt you a lot of times it happens after a um, a pregnancy test comes back positive, 
you express this to your partner. You say, hey, found out that I'm pregnant and his emotions automatically change. I don't care if he expressed happiness in the beginning. If his emotions start to change, nothing you do, no amount of sonograms and touch my belly and it's going to get better is going to change his mind. It's not. It's not going to change his mind at all. And that's, you know, as why it says one in six. And I believe this article was written in 20. All these are fairly recent between like 2019 and 2024. Um, so these are not like super old articles. But even if I went back in the archives and went back to the 19, the, the 90s, etc., it would still show a pattern. Okay. It also talks about more than 320... Yeah, I'm sorry. More than 320,000 women are abused by their partners during pregnancy each year. And it's very clear to say during pregnancy. It's not saying these women are abused just in general. It's saying during pregnancy that a lot of women, the abuse has one of two things, either escalated or started after she got pregnant. And in some cases chose to keep the baby. Okay. And this abuse is a, a number of ways, but many of us know that the abuse can be physical. Yes, it can be mental. It can be emotional. It can be verbal and it can be sexual. Um, so it is talking of all abuses. So, you know, let, let's, you know, stop saying that. Um, another article, this one is the PubMed Central. And I'm just going to read this particular line verbatim. The majority of research has found that between 3% and 9% of women experience abuse during pregnancy. There are, though there are well-established risk factors that are associated with higher rates of abuse, including young age, single relationship status, minority race, ethnicity, and poverty. And it says poverty. So understand when, when this is happening, a lot of these women who are being abused during pregnancy, a lot of them are living in impoverished conditions. They're not some, you know, middle high class person where they have family and support and can do what they need to do. A lot of these women are living, I think they would say below the poverty line. So on the poverty line or below the poverty line. Um, I didn't read everything, um, but again, I'll post this article. I just, I'm trying to just pull out the particular numbers to, to, to make sense of it. Um, this one is the Cal health report. And one thing that this article talked about was that they believed and not even a, a belief, but it, it came out that during the pandemic in 2020, that the maternal homicide um, rate was going to increase. Because what, what, what happened in, in 2020 that we all know, between 2020 and 2021, we were pretty much quarantined in our homes. Really couldn't go anywhere. Many of us could go to work. Many of us couldn't. You can go to the grocery store during a certain window of time, and you had to go back home. So you're talking, there were women who found out they were pregnant, was living with this person that they probably were trying to get away from, found out she was pregnant or, or whatever happened, and the man snapped. And I, I hate to say that the term snapped, but the man, you know, sadly, you know, um, unalived her. And it's just really disheartening. Um, let's see. See, I think I read, no, I read that one. Sorry, I'm, um, a lot of these articles have some of the same information. Uh, and then this was an article that was done, or I'm sorry, a study that was done in 2021 that stated that women were more than twice as likely to die from homicide during pregnancy and the year following childbirth. And this is not talking hypertensive disorders, 
hemorrhaging or infection. This is blatant homicide. So you're talking that within what the first two years, so, or maybe like 18 months or so, when a woman gets pregnant and then a year after she gives birth, she is more likely to die by homicide. Y you know, so it's, so the, and, and again, it's, it's not to scare anybody or a scare tactic. It's to just show that when you are telling these, these young women, the baby is a blessing, the baby is a blessing. If you're not taking into account the relationship she was in and you're telling her that this baby is a blessing, she gonna go to this man and be like, well, my grandma said this baby's a blessing. So you need to get on board. Like, okay, the football player, oh my God, what, in the 90s? Who unalived his pregnant girlfriend because he did not want to be a father. He, again, he had other children. He did not want her to continue on the pregnancy. So it's, you know, I, I, I'm all about being very logical, being very, I don't want to say smart in a sense, but I like to look at all aspects of of things and I'm not gonna go into something blindly if I was in a relationship where I was not married and I was dating a man whether we were solid or on and off off and on up and down sideways zigzagging if I got pregnant and I told this man hey um I'm pregnant and he expressed something really weird to me where he was like I'm not ready to be a father I'm not saying that I would take his in for his word and just run and you know go, go to a clinic but what I would definitely do is I would take that into account okay he has expressed he don't want this baby he's very he, he has expressed it to me so I need to take that and believe it and work with it how I need to but see Many of y'all will get pregnant, tell the father, he will say the same exact thing. I ain't ready to be no father. I'm too young. I already got kids. Who knows? I don't care. And you all will sit there and tell yourselves, well, he gonna come around. He gonna come around. He won't come around. That's why you will see a man with three, four, five baby mamas. Remember the one guy, I think on TikTok, who said he had, was it five baby mamas? I think it was five. Five. Yeah, I want to say five kids, five baby mamas. And he had expressed to all of them, all of them across the board, I do not use protection. And if I'm offering to get you the plan B, I'm offering you a trip to the clinic. Um, if you don't take it, you know, if, if you don't agree to this, you will be a single mother. And five women <laughs> apparently thought he was bluffing. Every single one of them must have thought he was bluffing. And now he was very clear. Again, I, I don't, I'm not on TikTok. So I was seeing his story on Instagram. So I don't know if anything else came out about that situation. But it's that saying that a man will express certain things to you and he will mean it. He will mean it. And he even said other women understood the assignment. <laughs> if they slept together, he would get the, the plan B or if things happen, they go to the clinic. But these five women thought they were different. I won't say special, even though I don't want to say, I'm going to say special. But they thought they were different. And, and I think he even said, too, that a lot of the women were within different tax brackets. You know, some were, I guess you could say, unemployed uh, minimum wage workers, while some of them were high, like um, boss babes, I'll say. They were boss babes. So these were not women that were all in the same projects. These were women across the board that all thought they were different for whatever reason, whether they were younger or a different ethnicity or because they had the means and the money. It doesn't matter. They all thought they were different. And he expressed to them very clear, very plain as day, I am not staying involved. I will not take care of that baby. If you choose to keep the baby, you're doing it alone. And I think what I think they said that they were trying to come after him for a child support or something like that. I don't even remember. Um, like I said, I'm not on TikTok, so I was not following that man's story or or his page. It just happened to be on Instagram because a lot of things flood over to 
um, Instagram. And I'm not saying that he was going to unalive those women, but he had expressed it. And too many women feel that they are different. I'm different. I'm different. He's going to want to be with me. If this man already has a child with another woman that he was not married to, you will not be different. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it in the comments. Well, he married me. I really don't care. I, I, then this, this video isn't for you. Duh. Duh. Not, the video, this video is not for you. Um, this video is for the women who are not married, who are having children by men who have expressed they don't want, um, they don't, they don't want this. They don't want the baby. And this video is also to talk about how in many cases, women are being abused and losing their lives. Um, and then this article was written in 2022 and I'm sorry, I didn't write, oh, this was a, this was a Harvard, a Harvard study and a Harvard article. It says women in the U S who are pregnant or who have recently given birth are more likely to be murdered than to die from obstetric causes. And these homicides are linked to a deadly mix of intimate partner violence and firearms. And I kind of said that in the, in the last article, but again, it's just, it's going to show just constantly all the time that when, you know, when, when women get pregnant, that's why, and I, and I think even some women have said that, that, even when they are married and they go to the hospital to give birth, when the nurse comes in to, you know, help her bathe and all that stuff, the nurse will ask her, do you feel safe? So this is not, you know, just for, for one small group. This is all women because, and, and I know we could all say, oh, well, this is just going to be for, uh, this is just going to be for, um, single women. No, married, get, married women get asked this as well. And like I said, I'm not focusing on married women, even though, yes, a married woman can fall victim to all of these. All of these. But a lot of the articles pointed out that this usually falls in line with single women who are living in poverty. Okay? Even though, yes, a married woman can have the same things happen. And... um Sorry, let me see. I'm reading on my phone because I forgot to print the articles. So, like this one, this one says 31%. So again, 31% of murder, I'm sorry, murder is the second most common cause of injury-related death for pregnant women. And it says 31%. Between 1990 and 2004, more than 1,300 pregnant women were unalive because I don't know if I can say the M word and I did say it so hopefully this doesn't get flagged. Most of these women, 56% were shot while the rest were stabbed or strangled. Okay, 77% of pregnant homicide victims are um, unalived during the first trimester of pregnancy. Isn't that the first three months? So, and this was the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Um, there's more statistics as well on here, but those are the ones that stuck out. So before you tell your family member or your friend, this baby is a blessing, honestly find out how that relationship that she was in or she is in is going. Be honest. Sit down with your, with your friend and say, okay, girl, you just said that you're, that you're pregnant. How are you feeling about it? How are you feeling? And then tell her straight up, okay, honey, this is what I need you to do. You need to take the emotion out of, out of this pregnancy. What I mean by taking the emotion out is Again, stop thinking about if you're having a boy or a girl. Stop thinking about the cute clothes. Stop thinking about all the things that you can do after having a baby. Filing the baby on your taxes, all these things. Just stop. Just dead it. Just ugh. Put it to, to bed. Put it to bed. Um, you need to focus on how you're feeling, 
How is he feeling if you've told him? And where are your thoughts? And be honest. Do not utter the words, this baby is a blessing, because y'all do such a disservice when y'all say that. And it, it drives me crazy. It really does. It drives me crazy because anytime I see that, like I saw a post on Instagram and a girl was basically saying that she was pregnant and that the father, basically he was acting a little weird and she didn't know what to do. And she was very, you know, she was pretty young um, and pretty not far along. Now there are some women in the comments telling her, girl, go to the clinic, go on, go to the clinic. And then I'm seeing the other comments. This baby is a blessing brought to you by God and this. And I'm thinking in my head like, okay, but will y'all be saying that if this same woman popped up on a news article of being, you know, a, a victim of DV? Y'all wouldn't be saying that. Because again, the baby is a blessing until DV gets involved or unaliving gets involved. And then it's, why would, he, why would he do that? And then we all find out he did not want the baby. Had expressed to her numerous times. There have been men who have purposely um, assaulted their girlfriends when they found out that she was pregnant because they wanted her to um, not have the baby. And when that didn't happen, other things come into play. I literally watched a video on one of my um, favorite YouTubers who does true crime about a young girl who was unalived because she um, was pregnant. The guy had expressed to her numerous times, mm -mm, I'm too young. I don't want the baby. Nope, 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 nope. And sadly, she lost her life. Um, I will link that. I won't show it because I don't have their permission. But I will link, um, I think I can link them, link them in my, uh, my comments after this. So, and the thing is, this is not about being pro-life or pro-choice. It's about being honest with people when they come to you about, you know, their struggles. It's not me sitting here with, with a pro-choice flag saying, ah! I, it's not about that. It's about being honest honest it's about having honest conversations it's about letting this person know that whatever they're deciding that at the end of the day their decision is is theirs but they need to know you may not have help you may not have that support that people are are telling you because again when a lot of these women are living in a poverty situation some people want to keep you in that situation. So they're going to make sure you keep the damn baby so that you don't ever grow and, and get out of that. How many of y'all know someone who was doing good, going to college, you know, whatever the case is, and boop, got pregnant, had to drop out of college. Now she's working at some menial minimum wage job, hating her life. And a lot of y'all were A-OK -okay with that because you know what? Now she like us. Now she just like us, girl. Yeah, I see y'all. I see y'all. <laughs> and it's really sad. And it, it's, it's almost more sickening than anything. And so whenever I see these posts on, on, on social media, you know, of some woman saying, oh my God, I'm pregnant. Or I, I get on Reddit a lot. Reddit is like, ugh, I'd be, I be drowning in Reddit. And there's a girl talking about she's pregnant. She don't know what to do. And, you know, girl ain't even, her frontal lobe ain't even fully developed. And everybody telling her, oh, it's just a blessing. And I just be really wanting to scream out, shut the fuck up. Those exact words, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but I'm a lady. So I don't, but, um, just on that note, I, I had a whole blur, but I ended up kind of just going off, <laughs> going off kilter. Um, I still hit on the majority of my point of my points. And it's just that I, I just really want people to stop saying that honestly, and just approaching the, this approaching these women with honesty. If you yourself are a single mother, I really don't care where you fall on the poverty line. Be honest. 
girl, this is hard. I have some days where I want to take this little child to the fire station or whatever, you know? And it's not about claiming the baby on your taxes once a year. It's not about all that. It's about the harsh reality of every day you have to take care of this child. January through December, sun up to sundown, you've got to take care of this child. Whether or not you've got other support, this is still your responsibility. And when you are not married and the father is expressing all this weird, his mind is all over the place, you need to think long and hard, long and hard. Like stop listening to your friends and family who are single mothers and they're barely making it. They're barely surviving. Like, you know, be, you know, be, be smart for you. Be smart for you. And like I said, it's not really a pro-choice or a pro-life thing. It is really looking at the facts. And yes, no, nobody wants to hear about women being unalived for continuing on with the pregnancy or having the baby after the, after the fact. But we have to live in reality. And the reality is this happens. And it happens, sadly, every day, pretty much. And we don't always hear about it. Because if we did, it'd be a really sad damn world like it already is but it'd be even sadder if every day we, we we turned on social media and another woman was unalived either pregnant or after she gave birth so i for me i want better for all women i really do um and i just i i want women to get out of this mindset of, well, you know, this baby is a blessing or this that, and the other, because it's, <laughs> regardless of anything, you're still bringing a human into this world. And regardless of anything, people can say whatever they want to say, girl, screw him. You don't need him. And I got you. I got you. But you have to really think in your head, does, does she really got me? Does she really got me? If I asked her for a ride, is she going to give me a ride? If I asked her for some money to get some milk or some Pampers, is she going to come through? And you got to answer that question, yes or no. It's not a may maybe she might. No, yes or no, baby. Yes or no. Is today Saturday? Where I am, yes, it is. It's Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's Saturday. So I know today is Saturday. I can't sit here and be like, no, no, today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Today's Wednesday. No, it's not. It's Saturday. So you have to be able to answer questions honestly. If I needed money for food, for Pampers, for milk, if I needed a ride, will this person or these people really come through for me? It's not about testing them. It's the honest truth. Forget the baby being a blessing. They're all telling me to keep this baby, but will any of them really be there for me in the end? And if you can't answer that honestly, then you need to reevaluate. Um, you need to re basically reevaluate what you're gonna do. Because it's it's not about being a statistic. It's yes, I would love to have every woman avoid being a statistic of any sort, whether it's DV or single motherhood or being unalived. Um, but sadly, we know that it's going to continue to happen. It's just, I would, I want the conversation around um, single um, unwed pregnancies to not be that this baby is a blessing. All babies are great. Yes, they are. They're, they're little cute little things, you know, cute little, not things, but, you know, cute little, little humans. Um but they are still living and breathing. They still survive. Like, hell, I was a baby. Surprise! <laughs> um, but it's it's deeper than that. It's deeper than, you know, keeping this baby because you've got other people who have the same lifestyle doing that. Like I said, we, we see women all the time going to college, doing all types of big things, wanting bigger and better for herself, and then getting pregnant and because she's got people in her ear who fell to the same um, the, the the same lifestyle, 
they're not going to tell her different. They're not going to tell her, girl, you may want to go to the clinic because you got a lot going for yourself. They may have one person, one person telling them that. One. But when you got one person out of 15 saying, saying otherwise, you're going to listen to the other 15, especially if that one person is like a, a classmate or a professor but you got your family and friends like, girl, we got you. Come home. Come home. Hell no, I'm going to the clinic. <laughs> so, um, it's, you know, it's, I just want better. And honestly, I, I, I probably won't say any more about this. I don't know if you have questions or comments or I don't know. You want to tussle. I'm joking. I'm not tussling with nobody. But, um, I hope this got the point across. And I hope it makes sense. And I'm, I'm not, you know, even if only, if, even if one person watched this video and kind of understands what I'm saying, um, awesome. Like I said, it is not me trying to scare anybody, any woman from getting pregnant and having a baby. It's me more or less opening up that door, opening up the eyes to saying it is not always this cute you know th this cute amazing thing and i know you see young influencers the the young rappers having children you know young and living these great lives but you have to also understand that a lot of them have the means and the money so they're able to kind of afford babysitters nannies and other things you know other things to help them unlike the average woman who is living paycheck to paycheck so that's all. Um, again, it's just more of stop saying babies are blessings and really use your discernment when, you know, if you do get pregnant and you're a little concerned. I always say try to go to an unbiased party, aka a, a doctor, a nurse, like a, go to a clinic. You know, don't ask your friends who already have children and are single. Maybe talk to someone who's married. With children and kind of ask them ask her you know um, avoid talking to people who are gonna be in your same shoes single mothers because a lot of them will try to get you to I don't want to say join you know their their life but they will I guess I can say gaslight you in a way to keep a, the baby when you yourself are not financially, um, or when you yourself are not stable in all areas enough to, you know, keep this, keep this baby. So go to an unbiased party and really take heed. I'm not saying go to someone who's pro-life, go to someone who's pro-choice, go to someone who you know is going to tell you the real honest. We all have that person who's going to be like, sit your ass down. And they're going to tell you the real honest truth. Go to those types of people because it helps you to really formulate, get your, your thoughts and, and stuff all jumbled together and get it, you know, get everything sorted out. But don't go to people who you, you may end up like if you choose to keep the baby, okay? Um, just be smart, use discernment, ask the hard hitting questions. And um, understand, like I said, these stats were not to in any way, shape, or form scare. It was to inform because it's happening. It has been happening and it continues to happen. And honestly, it breaks my heart when I see these news outlets of women being abused or unalived um, because of an unwanted and unplanned pregnancy. So... Please, if you like this video, um, please comment if you have any questions or concerns. Again, I will post all of the articles and I believe I can post the video that I watched that the, um, about the young girl who was unalived because of being pregnant. And um, yeah, like and subscribe for more. And I hope to bring you more lighthearted videos um, like something this um, intense and heavy. But that is all I have. Bye.